Okay. You ready? <laughs> so, <laughs> hi everyone. Um, everybody, we're going to get started now. And so I would like to welcome you all and thank you so much for coming out tonight. My name is Holly Bernini and I'm the Director of Development for the Goodnow Library Foundation. And I'll just give you a brief history about the foundation and then quickly move over to Shishi. But the foundation, just so you know, we, um, well, one, we have flyers we would love for you to take. Tells who we are and what we do. But we were founded by the trustees of the library in 2008 and we do fundraising for the big projects, for renovations, for upgraded technology, all of that sort of thing here at Goodnow. We also do some programming such as this. We have um, the Good Now Book Nook, and if you don't know it, it's a 24-7 um, online book sale, which is absolutely fabulous because it's used books, but they, they're all vetted, so a lot of them are just like new. So go online, check it out. Um, and we're actually having a book sale here in the library on May 6th and 7th, if you want to come in and check it out. It will be right here in this room. Um, we, and so we also support smaller things. We bought iPads recently for the makerspace upstairs. We, um, what else have we purchased? We, we, excuse me. Oh, the museum pass, we <laughs> do the museum pass program, which I think a lot of people know about. Um, we pay for the fish tank and the maintenance and the children. So a lot of little things too. So that is what we do, that is who we are. Um, we would love for you to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, we just need to get the word out. We like the community engagement, we like people knowing all the great things going on in the library, and so that is our job. But uh, we are here tonight, of course, for Shishi, and it's Shishi, then, uh, I'm not gonna do it, in Inwedgen, in Wedgen. In Wedgen. <laughs> um, Shishi is the founder and senior strategist at Life Stage Strategies. As a cross-generation strategist, Shishi is passionate about illuminating next steps in your life work. For instance, in your first or last career move, parenting, or for us, most of us here, I think, um, becoming an empty nester. So when Shishi, uh, when I learned that she could come and tell us who we're gonna be, what we should do in this next stage of our life, I said, sign her up. So here is Shishi, I'm happy to introduce her, and thank you so much. Thank you. Applause. Thank you, Holly. And thank you so much to all of you for coming and to the Good Now Library Foundation and libraries across the country, really, for all the excellent work that you do. I'm really glad to be here. And full disclosure, I have slides on my iPad here. And for several reasons, which we'll get into a little bit later, I'm going to follow. I'm, I'm going to use my iPad and follow the slides. So if you'll work with me there, I would appreciate it. So what's now, what's next in your empty or emptying nest? Tonight we're going to talk about uh, what you want, who you'll be, letting go and holding on. Or maybe it's holding on and letting go. We'll, we'll see when we get there, okay? And we're waiting for a few more people to arrive with traffic. So we are gonna start a little bit slower and, and kind of build up some speed. And the first thing I'd love for you all to do is I'd like to invite you on Facebook Live to post into comments and then also here just call out um, how you're arriving this evening to this space, how resourced you feel, how uh, available you are to learning and open to growing and how transparent you're willing to be with yourself and with one another. So just pop a word or so in the comments and then what do you think, live audience? <laughs> Unsure. Unsure, yeah. Curious. Curious. I think grateful for a network of people that are doing it along with me. Okay, grateful for a network to come alongside you and do it at the same time. Excited for change. Excited for change. Mm -hmm. uh, open to learn from Facebook here. Open to learn. Thanks, Facebook audience. <laughs> All right. How deep do you want to go? You want to, since we're talking about flying, that's kind of the theme. You want to fly far and high. Do you want to kind of keep it a little bit closer to home? Or do you want to just sort of stay in your seat? Literally or metaphorically? What you think? I'd say go for it. 
Go for it. Okay. So however you're feeling and wherever you are, that's exactly where you should be. And that's what you should do. So life stage strategist. I made that term up, if you couldn't tell. Uh, spent a lot of time thinking about what captured what I do and what I want to do and who I help and how I want to help. And I worked with a coach who saw this through line of my life of working with people across generations and across communities, divisions of all different kinds. So I help anybody. Um, my youngest client is about 21, and the oldest client that I've worked with into their 80s. So I literally help anyone try to figure out what's now and next in their most important relationships. First, starting the relationship with self. And after that, the next circle out, which is usually immediate family members. Sometimes it's colleagues at work. Um, my sweet husband is here tonight to support me, and I think he would consider some of his work colleagues to be in that inner circle. And then moving out from there. So if you or you know of anyone who wants some support in working on those relationships at home, at work, um, in your life work, I don't use the term work life, I use the term life work, then let's talk, okay? So, Library Week, we're just on the cusp of Library Week, so I want to um, say an additional thank you and acknowledgement to the Good Now Foundation for all their, um, their programming and their good work um, with Library Week. So, Facebook Live audience, you have a little bit heavier lift tonight. Um, you're likely at home maybe juggling kids and carpools and dinner, trying to get it on the table. So thank you so much for showing up and just be as present as you possibly can be and let the rest of it go. I think the recording will be available so you can go back and watch it. And then in person audience, wow, how about yay for us, right? In person, out of the house, uh-huh. I appreciate whatever you had to juggle in order to be here in person. Um, we touched on that. So, time together tonight is for you. Tonight is not about, even though I focus on relationships, it's not about your relationship with your kids of any age whether they've, they're grown and flown or whether they're in your, sitting in your kitchen tonight. It's not about your relationship with your partner or spouse. It's not about your relationship with your parents. This is about your relationship with yourself. So I invite you to focus on you. And when's the last time you were really able to do that? And I don't mean a mani-pedi. <laughs> Yeah, just you. Most of our audience are mothers, and we just don't get to do that very often, do we? We don't take the opportunity to do that. So I invite you to not think about the dirty dishes in the sink, don't think about the deadline at work tomorrow, don't think what the kids may or may not be doing outside the room or back at the house. Just focus on you, okay? I'm gonna try to do the same thing. Um, we're going to move around a little bit. If you want to, I'm going to invite you to stand up a couple times and kind of think about things by using your body. And hopefully we'll laugh a little bit, might even cry a little bit. Um, that's okay. So do what moves you um, or don't. And so something I need to start with, um, my eldest child, our eldest child, my husband, um, is at the back of the room, so if I keep pointing that way, that's, that's um, to whom I'm pointing. Our eldest child lives in New York City. And if you heard the news today, um, there was a mass shooting in the subway. Our son is fine, thankfully. He was locked down at work. Um, he, I believe, was already at work when the shooting happened, and they, they told everybody to stay in the building, and they locked the building. He's not anywhere near Brooklyn where the shooting happened. Nevertheless, especially having lived in Boston, 
with the marathon bombing. Uh, yeah, it's all too familiar. So I'm a little bit shaky tonight. Um, he's fine. He's actually on a train. Is he on a train? Uh, shortly. Okay, yeah. Shortly on a train coming home tonight, which was a planned trip. Um, but that's why I have my slides here. Uh, because, like I said, I'm a little bit shaky. So thank you for understanding that. Um, me and my perspective on the empty nest. I wore motherhood like a badge. A badge of honor, sometimes a little bit of a badge of embarrassment. Remember the years when your kids used to embarrass you? Before you embarrassed them? When there was nothing that you could do that would embarrass them? Yeah, that's the way I was about motherhood. It was my greatest title that I could have ever had and such a blessing and such a gift from God for me to be able to be a mother. In addition to a lot of other things, I'm a lifestyle writer, or I was, and I used to write column after column after column, dreading the empty nest. What will I do? Who will I be without these people, without this, this job, this focus that was entirely mine for two decades? I didn't work outside the home for pay. You can bet I worked outside the home, but not for pay. And so my kids were my world. And they still are to a certain degree, but I've been able to, or actually I think I've been forced to shift from that because they're, they're flown now, they're gone, except one's coming back tonight. <laughs> I had no idea who I'd be separate from that active parenting role. And yet, over the course of about three to five years, I figured it out. And I built this life that I love, that excites me, that energizes me. And it's not all perfect. I screw up parenting still on a daily basis. I screw up in a lot of ways. But I'm really happy with who I am and my relationship with myself. So... Chapter one, they are the sun, or at least my son, S-U-N. I'm gonna read something to y'all. I'm gonna put on my reading glasses. Who else is in that place of needing reading glasses? Yeah. It's Friday, and I've gotten my pink slip. After 21 years, I'm being furloughed from the full-time parenting gig. My nest empties this Sunday, and I'm a mix of calm efficiency ticking all the to-do boxes, the face I'm showing my kids, but hiding in the closet the choking back tears hot mess that I am. How is it that 1,000 months of littles, now bigs, in the house are now reduced to two days? Preparations for goodbyes are strung out along this extended plateau of emotion. Just as their childhood seemed to crawl, so the feelings caught up in these get ready days, sadness, fear, regret, apprehension, anticipation, are all crawling up behind me. I dutifully shepherd my children through the paces and phases of getting it done. The sorting and the trashing and the repurposing and the packing serving to keep me grounded and not crawling at bay. The time leading up to their leaving leaves me with that unpleasant tingle at the back of the throat, the conscious tamping down of sadness forefront in my mind, the I'll be sad later for now I'm just intentionally choosing mindfulness in this moment and trying to not to lose my you know what. Whether it's during the final laundry school session, one more Kimball's ice cream run, or our annual last supper the night before school, but this time, school is thousands of miles away, and I won't get to glimpse their daily life as I did from across the breakfast bowl during the 4,712 times I drove them in the car or between the bookshelves when I volunteered in the library. What will life be like for them? Will they have someone to sit with at lunch? Will peers seek their company or reject them without a second glance? The worries are sometimes the same, no matter if they're eight, 18 or 28. Then all of a sudden it is goodbyes in parking lots, airports and dorm lobbies. 
a tight embrace here, a held kiss on the forehead there, for which they now must bend. Last, I love yous and whispered prayers of protection and blessing. And for just as long as those days crawled, and just as swiftly as the years flew, they are off. Back home, in the midst of happiness for my fledglings flown the nest, there are the expected teary, okay, sometimes sobbing, moments of sadness, empty beds, empty fridge, clear calendars, quietude. And then there are the unexpected, blindsiding, knee-bending times of empty nestedness we stumble upon, when it's hard to hear the platitudes of just be happy for them, the forgotten pack of Uno cards unearthed from under the couch, their baby blanket neatly folded and full of the scent of them, a look-alike child in a similar sports uniform turning to wave goodbye to the parent dropping them at practice. That parent isn't you. That wave isn't yours. It's not empty, this nest. It's still full of pets, plants, furnishings, my husband and me, and memories. Those memories, well, they take up a lot of space in my home, in my head, in my heart. Every turn of every corner, every glance into every too neat room, the detritus of teenage life no longer strewn about, calls to mind the moments spent in those spaces, the eventful and the mundane, the joy shared, the tears shed, the laughter ringing out so that I can hear it still. So that's where I was. <laughs> And I got through that without crying, so that's pretty good. Where are you? Let's do a quick poll, okay? Facebook audience, participate too in comments. So, raise your hand if you've got kids at home. Okay, keep it up if you've got more than one at home. All right, more than two. And how about, are they home? Are they home again? Are they rebounders? Did they fly and now they're back? And I don't mean for summer break or, you know, for a weekend. What are we hearing on Facebook? Oh, one. Okay. Hold on. One. That was a comment about your reading. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it was very well said. Okay. Thank you. So. And anybody whose kids, they're gone, they're flown. Those of y'all who are dancing naked in the kitchen, yeah? <laughs> well, maybe it should happen. You, okay, yeah, husband, get that thought out of your head. <laughs> he just checked his watch to see what time the older kid's going to be home, right? See if we have time to dance naked in the kitchen. Okay, note to you all. Who, whose kids actually have flown, when they come back around, especially for holidays, put clothes on. Don't come out of the bedroom naked. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. All right. So that's where we are. We, we pretty much all got kids, um, at least close. Yeah, they haven't been gone that long. All right. So now I invite you to stand up. If you're here in person, you don't have to. Please don't feel like you have to. And Facebook Live audience, I'd love if you would stand if you're able to. Okay, we're going to do something called perspectives work, which is the way that we're viewing something, the way that we're thinking about it, how we feel about it, and what that looks like in our body. Okay, so kind of move around a little bit, twist around. So the idea of the empty or emptying nest. Give me a metaphor for how it makes you feel. Does it make you feel like you just want to be tied up, wrapped up in a ball? Does it make you feel like you want to fly? What's it feel like? <laughs> Gina, what's it feel like? Uh, it feels a long way away. My kids are way over the water. A long way away. It feels a long way away. Okay. So I feel like I have a lot of time. A lot of time. But I know that's not true. Mm, it's not true. No, yeah. yeah. It's going to go really fast. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
And then I heard something back here. Yeah, this is sad. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had more kids now. <laughs> <laughs> more kids. Somebody wishes they had more kids. I feel guilty that I don't feel sad. Mm. <laughs> guilty yeah. that I don't feel sad. Huh? What else? I was going to say I'm somewhere in the middle because I'm so excited to take this to move out and do their own thing. But they're like, what about me? What about me? So, yeah. Still Okay, so I'm hearing a lot of both. That was, I feel a little bit of, of both. I feel glad that they get to go do their own thing and a little sad for me. Untethered. Yeah. Untethered. Ooh, that's a great word. Yeah. So feel, feel what it would be like to feel untethered. Yeah. Just, just move around. Yeah. Untethered. Huh? How about, I saw a little bit of body language kind of doing this, a little bit of guilt maybe, like I should feel differently than I do. Yeah? Well, you want to make sure that they're really off too. Mm. Ooh, you want to make sure that they're really off, that they're really gone, or what? That they're okay and that it's a process. Mm. The window shut. They're still, you know, yeah. calling and asking questions, and so it's kind of getting excited. And then um, I think the phone call that just brought me down for the next week. So, so it's, it's a process. Right. Yeah. yeah. You you don't you you can't just shut the the window. They don't just fly and then you shut the window. Yeah. And then you get that phone call that that puts you in a funk for a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And likely they've moved on, right? If, if you check in with them a week later, hey, how's what, I, you know, such and such. What are you talking about? With no punctuation. Go ahead. I, I want to know when, what's the sign I know I've done it right? What's the sign I know I've done it right? And you're sure that that sign is out there, right? It's got to be out there. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it, yeah. And from Facebook? Um, two comments. Um, I want to fly when it happens, but it will also be a little strange. And I love parts of being empty nesters, but will always miss my children, especially as little ones. Yeah, littles. Oh, mm. get neighbors. That's what <laughs> the best thing to do. Yeah. Okay, y'all are welcome to sit if you'd like. So whatever those feelings are, acknowledge them. Take a minute. Just go inside yourself and acknowledge those feelings. Wallow a little bit in the sadness, maybe in the guilt, maybe in the guilt that you're not sad. You know, you can't spell wallow without allow, so allow all of those feelings. Just take a second. Who can give me a concise, off-the-cuff definition of toxic positivity? I know we, this is a library. I know we have wordsmiths here. <laughs> You're faking it. Oh, hey, yeah, everything's great. It's always great, right, whether it is or not. That can be toxic. Toxic positivity can be toxic to your relationship with yourself as your kids are getting to that point. Ignoring hard feelings. Mm -hmm. Ignoring hard feelings. Thank you, Facebook Live. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, all, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's the concise definition of toxic positivity is social media. Right there. And one more yeah. is uh, repression is toxic positivity and not allowing yourself to accept the downsides. Mm. People have a lot to say about toxic Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay. What you want to do, not do. Do you want to reinvent yourself? Do you want to invent yourself? What do you want? 
I like to think of accessing what you want um, from the perspective of a triangle. There's a handout that was created and there's a, there's a triangle next to what you want. So one point of the triangle is your passion. What you feel right here. What your heart says. What's really important? What really matters? What's your passion? What's your power? What are you good at? What are you great at? What do you kick ass at? What do your friends come to you for? And your kids. And if they don't right now, they will. I promise. What's your power? And then your purpose. What you were created to do. What you were brought here for. What you have to do so that when you get the, to the end of your life, you can say, I did maybe what's written on your epitaph. So take those three things, your passion, your power, and your purpose, and spend a minute and think. You can take them one at a time, your passion. What does your heart say? What really matters right here to you? And you can write it down or you can just think about it. How about your power? What do you do better than anybody? Don't play small here. There's a long list of what you do better than anybody. Imagine I've asked your best friend that question about you. And your purpose. What are you here for? What difference do you make? What matters about you being part of humanity? The nexus, the synergy of that is what you want. Because then you're fulfilling yourself, you're fulfilling others, you're living a fulfilled life for humanity. Sometimes trying to come up with what you want is easier by figuring out what you don't want. Where does your passion get stepped on? Where does it feel like your power is taken away from you or violated? And your purpose, what isn't happening in your world or the world? What don't you want? Maybe you don't want the relationship that you're in. Maybe you don't want to be alone. Maybe you don't want the job that you have. Maybe you don't want the job that you think is your dream job. Maybe you don't want to live where you live anymore. Maybe you don't want to move. Find that, that nexus, that synergy, that place where those three points come together. So chapter two, the nest empties. 
The world doesn't stop turning, though for a little while for me it felt like it, it did. So I had a traumatic brain event the first December that all of our birds had flown. I was at our uh, camp in Maine with our two dogs and alone other than the dogs. And there's a day, about a 12 hour period, that I can put together a total of about 10 minutes of. I was hallucinating. I was having um, blinding tunnel vision. I wasn't sure who I was. I didn't really know where I was. I was imagining that Holly was there and we were baking brownies, and I would kind of come to and realize that Holly had never been to our camp in Maine, and there weren't any brownies baking in the oven. And after about eight hours of it, I finally called 911. And because our audience is mostly middle-aged women, you all know how serious it has to be for you to call 911 on yourself. <laughs> You don't want to be a tr any trouble. You don't want to bother anybody. So they came. No, it's not carbon monoxide. I think they thought that I was high on something. I wasn't. Uh, they took me to the local hospital. They ran some tests. They did an MRI. They did some other things. And they found a brain aneurysm, which is completely unrelated and apparently I've had since I was in utero. But they decided I needed to go via ambulance overnight to Mass General Trauma Unit. So fast forward, they never really figured out what it was. They threw around a lot of terms like transient global amnesia, transient epileptic amnesia, which yes, that's epilepsy, uh, confusional migraine, which sounded really minor, but apparently it's a big deal, or maybe even a stroke. The result was I lost about 25% of my vocabulary. I lost about the same percentage of memory, both short and long term. To this day, I can't really remember our honeymoon, and I can't remember the births of our children. And I spent the next just about year rehab and crawling my way back from this. One thing that I lost that I haven't really been able to regain is my ability to write creatively. So like that piece that I read to you is an article that I wrote before this brain event happened. So my empty nest felt like it was scattered and blown away in a hurricane. It wasn't this sweet place of refuge that I had wanted to create for my kids to come home to and for me to be live in and come home to, and for my husband to, to live and be in and come home to. It was a hell of a year. And fast forward to the following Thanksgiving, so almost a year later, kids are home from college, and my youngest pulls me aside at one point and says, Mom, you seem really lonely. And I realized in that moment that I was. And he said, you also seem bored and you're getting kind of boring, <laughs> as only your 19-year-old can say to you. And he said, you need to get a job. OK, thanks, son. So a couple days later, he comes back to me and he says, it's not a job. You don't need a job. He said, career. Go build a new or rebuild your old career. Go serve. Okay, thanks, hon. So he goes back to college, and I you know, paid a little bit of attention to what he was saying, and I thought about being a bus, school bus driver or maybe a substitute teacher because I love kids. There were a couple other jobs I threw around, but none of them really felt right. And then he calls me a week or two later, right before exams, and he says, it's not a career, it's a calling. Go find your calling. So I decided I would go on a calling quest. Who do I need to be to go on this quest? So who do you choose to be going on your quest for whatever's next? 
Now, life is best lived, in my view, right in the between of being and doing. But so much of our life is about doing, right? What do we do? Just call it out. What do you do? do you cook, grocery shop. cook <laughs> grocery shop, drive carpool, yeah, do the laundry, work, clean, clean. Volunteer. volunteer, fight with your partner, fight with your kids, right? We're doing, we're doing, we're doing. Who are we being in all that? I know I'm being big like talking with my hands, which I'm not supposed to do. You know, when you give a presentation, you're not supposed to talk with your hands. <laughs> so being, take a moment and go inside yourself. I know I keep inviting you to do that, but it's important. Tonight's yours, remember? Go inside yourself and think about who you're being, what choices you're making about who you be. So there's a balance between the being and the doing, between the choice and the choosing. So do you want to get up again, or are you happy sitting? I see a couple that, okay, up, oh, let's get up. All right. We're going to do a little more perspectives work. Remember, that's the way you're viewing something, the way you're seeing it, right? They're leaving. Oh, I saw a dance back there. Woo. Somebody danced. Okay. Who doesn't feel like dancing and thinking about their leaving? Maybe the tears earlier? A little bit. I have a little bit of a little bit. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's good. You're ahead of me, though. All right. Who's feeling, ugh, ugh, I was. Anybody else? Oh, what's this going to be like? They're leaving. This has been my job, my most important calling, career, whatever you want to name it. Anybody feeling that way? It's okay. One day I feel that way. Yeah. Oh, one day I feel that way and one day I don't. Yeah. Or I think when, you come, when they come back and you want to go back, or they expect you to be who you were yeah. then. Brilliant, <laughs> Suzanne. Yeah, when they come back and expect you to be who you were then. Because they're changing and growing and evolving, right? Your mom. Your mom. Moms don't change. No. So there's a lot of, of feeling that way, right? Yeah, the, in the they're leaving. And I promised you this was about you tonight, right? So why am I saying they're leaving? Why does that matter? It's important so that you can balance it against the perspective that I'm going to ask you to take now. So strike a pose for they're leaving, whatever that looks like to you. And maybe it's like a little bit of this. It's a little bit of both. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Drive in the moving truck. We got power arms here. Yeah. Anybody else not quite feeling that ecstatic about it? Some ambivalence. How, how, show me ambivalence. What does ambivalence look like with your body? Ooh, like that. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. One foot straight, one foot turned out. Kind of twisty. Yeah. Like one of those yoga moves that I can't do. Okay, so let that go. I'm going to spin because that's the way I let go of perspective. So you can spin too if you want or just shake it off. Come on, loosen up. All right, new perspective. I'm launching. I'm launching. How about that? Oh, we still got some of this. We got some of this going. Yeah. Say it. Call it out loud. I'm launching. I'm launching. Again, louder. 
I'm launching. One more time. I'm launching. I'm launching. Okay, and what does that look like then? Because it's not really, I'm launching. Yeah, what does it look like? What's your version of launching? Are you launching into the ocean? Are you launching into a chair to read a book for the first time in 17 years? Well, probably more than that. Yeah, what is it? Where are you launching to? It's a little unknown. It's a little scary. It's a little unknown. It's a little scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's it going to take to just step out there into the unknown and the scary? A push? Okay. Can you push one another? What else? Here, you know, Ellen, what is it? We were talking about it earlier because I have two stepsons that are, you know, I've known for six or seven years and one older. And so I have some of the same feeling of like, and then that guilt too. Okay. Yeah, so some stepkids and some. Yay, they're leaving, but guilt about that excitement. Yeah, maybe excitement to get your husband to yourself a little bit. Yeah. And he's probably very much feeling that way. Right. To and get a beautiful home in Maine. <laughs> 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 she floated. Right. A beautiful <laughs> home in Maine <laughs> that she can go to. Don't hesitate to call 911 <laughs> when, uh, when you have to. So who you'll be, what kind of choices do you have here? Not what you'll do, who you'll be. Will you be brave? Will you be adventurous? Will you be mindful? Will you be reckless? Holly, I think you were going to say something. Yeah, I was just thinking in terms of uh, your relationships with others and your career and this and that. You know, will you be a leader? Or will you, are you somebody who wants to kind of come out of your shell and be that? Or are you somebody who wants to um, follow and take it all in and learn from other people all the time with those? And uh, just a lot of ways to think about it. A lot of ways to think about it. Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to learn from others? Do you want to teach others? Do you want to use yourself as an example? Uh, to, for others to follow or not follow. And how risk averse are you? How risk averse are you? How risk averse are you? Oh, I like risk. I like risk. <laughs> <laughs> but most people don't. You have to renegotiate your relationships, your, your marriage, your everything is renegotiated when you reinvent yourself. Yeah. Who will you be for you? Yeah. A little bit of feeling of, you know, I feel like I want to go out and travel and I want to do these things and almost feel like, am I allowed to do that yet? Uh, I want to go travel. I want to do all these things. Am I allowed to do that? And I'm guessing that doesn't have anything to do with COVID, right? Am I allowed? No, nothing to do with that. Yeah. Is that okay? Is there a different place? Or should I still be at home? So the, you know, mom still at home. Like, Mom at home, yeah, That's always silly, there. Really, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> Do you set your vacation calendar and then broadcast it to your family, or do you wait for theirs before you set yours? Who will you be? Will you continue to be the friend that you've been to the same people that you've been friends with? Or did that serve you when your kids were friends? Did you serve those relationships because your kids were friends? Who you'll be, how your priorities are shifting and changing, which leads us to talk about what you want. Okay, it all comes full circle. What you want, who you'll be. And then, what's next? Holding on. In thinking about the next phase that's coming or that's here, what do you want to hold on to? What's important? What really matters? 
There are no wrong answers. What do you want to hold on to? Authenticity, vulnerability, belonging. Where do you belong now? You had all, all these memberships, right? As parent, as volunteer, with the friends who sometimes are the parents of your kids' friends, sometimes not. Belonging really matters. What else? What else do you want to hold? Fun. Fun! Woo! Finally! <laughs> That's some of that dancing naked in the kitchen. Yeah? What's important about fun? So life affirming, despite tragedy around us all in, in various ways, the ability to still be able to use humor and dance and mm -hmm. um, enjoy music, survival. Life affirming, enjoy music, dance, survival. Be able to rise above the, the mire mess is what I'm hearing, yeah? Who else wants fun? <laughs> okay. How about joy? You want to hold that? Humor? Purpose. Yeah, there you go. See? We can't escape. Somebody's phone is ringing, and sure, it's the kids. Yep. Okay, y'all can sit if you want. But you, 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 can, you can also stand, because now we're going to talk about letting go. So kind of do this, so you sort of get, get in the rhythm of it, letting go. Or it might be, yeah. What do you want to let go of? What's important in this moment tonight, right now, to let go of? The worry. Worry. Yeah. With two teenage boys, worry, the number one. Yeah, so fear. Yeah. Holding on to that doesn't serve. You, them, the relationship. What else do you want to let go of? Guilt. Guilt. Um, having to feel so busy. Having to I feel miss, so busy. Uh, Tell me more. I miss that. Like, having, like, Yeah. And so the other day I got home from work early and I was like, well, I guess we'll start dinner at 4 o'clock. What else am I going to do? And it's like, it's just so odd. You know, it's, it's an odd next step. So. so if I were your coach, I would assign, I don't assign homework because it, it just gives some people the shakes. I assign field work. I would assign you an hour a day of nothing. Yeah. Just nothing. No journaling, no reading. Just nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and yet. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. Ch letting go of that. Yeah. And then what's possible? So what I hear there is, is that that's just part of your, your DNA. Yeah. 
is go, go, going, busy. Friends, family. Friends, family. Work. Yep. And that is who you are. It's not just what you do. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. So what in there is something to let go of that, that feels OK to let go of? I think that it's OK to be um, calm in your own skin and to mm. like, relax. OK. And I, I can do that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> So making dinner at four, because now you have now you have that time and that space to do that. Yeah. So what else? What else do you want to let go of? How about judgment? Playing small. Expectations. We have no idea what it's going to be like tomorrow, let alone however many years until they're all gone, and, and gone, gone, like not rebounding, gone. Yeah, so let go of the expectations. And this was touched on, but it's my final let go note, who you were. And that might be a stretch for some people to let go of who you were. But it's not about them tonight, right? It's about you. Let go of who you were to create opportunity and space for who you are becoming. That fun, adventurous, maybe a little reckless, maybe busy, maybe bored, Whatever is out there, whatever opportunities, so you can be open to them, but you gotta let go of some stuff in order to create space and room for the opportunities. So we're at eight o'clock, which is really hard to imagine. Um, I didn't tell you my chapter three, which was about my calling quest. If you were gonna go on a calling quest, where would you go? Costa Rica. Costa Rica, okay. Anybody else? Morocco. Morocco. Wow, I love this adventure. Yeah. I went to Oregon. It just seemed like the right place to be. <laughs> yep. And that's where I figured it out. I did a full circle. I came back to a lot of who I used to be and what I used to do. And that's where I've found fulfillment and purpose and what I want to do and get to do and who I want and get to be. So go on your calling quest, wherever that may be. It might be in your backyard. Maybe it's South Carolina, maybe it's Maine. Boy, there's a lot that can be found in Maine. So we kind of got to know each other a little bit. You heard a little bit about my story. I heard a little, little bit about yours. We talked about what you want, who you'll be. We talked about holding on, and we talked about letting go. And I know this is just a night that has only scratched the surface, but that's all we had time for. So there's more if you want it. Reach out. Okay. Spend some time in here, and in here, and in here, and here, and go on your calling quest. All right, three minutes after. <laughs>